The first thing that you want to do when you want to flesh a hide is figure out what is the top and what is the bottom. So luckily this hide still has a tail attached, so it makes it really easy to tell where the bottom is. This is the tail. This is the neck. It's much easier to flesh the hide if you start with the neck facing you. The flesh just comes off much easier if you do it from the neck down. So I'm gonna start by pinning the hide here with my body. I'm pinning the hide right under my belly. And I'm really putting a lot of body weight on the hide. I'm pushing like with most of my body weight, I'm pinning this hide really effectively. I've had a lot of students go to scrape and then as they scrape the hide just moves because they're not pinning the hide effectively. So it's really important to focus on that. Fleshing the hide is actually one of my favorite parts. It's really gratifying to go from a really nasty looking hide to one that is smooth and free of flesh. I always like to have something to put um, to put all of my little hide bits in. And you know this fleshing tool as I said, when we were looking at how to make a fleshing tool, I really like how wide this is, but these hoses are slipping and are super annoying. Oh yeah, cheetah duct tape, thank you. Oh yeah, that's more like that. So I'm getting in here, I'm trying to go, like it's a little harder when you're first fleshing, you need to break through the layer of the flesh to get to the skin itself, but as I go, I am getting in and under that flesh. And so once I've established that spot where I'm under the flesh, then I'm trying to continue going under the flesh. And it's much easier to do that, to go from a spot that I've already removed the flesh from and continue to remove the flesh than it is to go um, straight into the flesh to begin with. So I'm going to turn this hide really frequently because I always want to be working in this area. In general, I have the tail end facing down, but I often move the hide around a little bit so that I'm going at an angle. So I'm always working just in this area. You can see here how when this hide was taken off the animal, someone cut the hide off a little bit here and we've got a little bit of a gouge mark into the hide but it's not so bad. The angle that I'm holding my fleshing tool, also known as my scraper at, changes depending on what I'm scraping. So as I'm taking off this flesh, I'm actually finding myself using a little bit of a steeper angle than I would use if I was taking off the grain, which we'll be doing later. And that's something you're really gonna need to get a feel for. Like you're gonna need to be fleshing the hide yourself and feel like, oh, what is it like when I use a more flat angle? What is it like when I use a steeper angle? And the first hide you flesh is probably gonna take you a good while, like probably, an hour or something like that. But once you get good at it, and once you start developing the muscle memory of fleshing, and once you just get the hang of it, you can probably do somewhere between three and six in an hour. So you'll see that I've built up a lot of flesh near the end here, which I always put in the bucket because this this is can get really nasty over time. Like this, you don't you don't want that just sitting around. <laughs> And so I always bury my flesh bits. If they're super fresh and you have a dog, you might want to try feeding them to your dog. So when I get when I get in here near the edge, I'm going to actually let my scraper scrape off the edge of the hide. But when I do that, I don't want to gouge into my scraping beam because that can cause little divots. And those little divots, once you take the hair off of the hide, could cause you to make holes. So I'm careful as I go off to not like go really hard into the scraping beam. Okay. 
So notice I'm moving the hide. And as I'm moving the hide, I'm really careful to not pick up on the scraping beam. Because if you do, if you're using this style of scraping beam and you pick up on it, then the whole thing falls over and it's super annoying. But easily remedied. So you'll notice that I'm waiting to take the flesh off of the neck until last, but I'm using the neck and kind of a long neck to pin the hide. So as you're fleshing, it's really important that you don't ever let the fleshing knife go sideways. That's how you're gonna cut your hide. Like if I just keep going forward with this dulled knife, I'm pushing as hard as I can and there's no way that I'm going to damage the hide. You wanna go deep enough. You wanna reach the white of the hide. Whereas if I went sideways, which I don't really want to do because I don't want to completely ruin the hide. I, could, I would put a hole into the hide. So again, you always want to be working here. You don't want to be working on the edges of the scraping beam because if you do, then you're much more likely to put holes in your hide. So you always want to be working in this area. You always want to be scraping directly down. You can have your hide at a little bit of an angle. The hide sometimes, it's not as big of a deal now as it will be when we're taking off the grain, but the hide, you can see here, it's kind of wanting to buckle and scrunch up. You wanna keep the hide flat on the beam as much as possible. And that's gonna help you not make holes. All of these tips are basically for, for avoiding holes. But remember, the way to avoid holes is not by going mamby-pamby like this, because this is not doing any good. You really want to be putting your energy into that spot right between where there is not flesh and where there is flesh. Because if you're scraping past that point onto where there is flesh and where that flesh is bent over, then you're just totally wasting your energy. So really put that energy into that spot where the flesh starts. And your strokes are relatively short. Here I've gotten to the tail and I generally remove the tail. So you can see, I'm just gonna hold the tail tight and I'm just gonna cut it off right there. That goes in there. I also don't want these super long leg peninsulas, the elbow there, it's gonna be really hard to tan. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut those off. And again, it's much easier to cut if you have tension. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna flesh the vast majority of the hide. And you'll notice that I'm cleaning off the flushing knife pretty frequently, and that makes it a lot more effective at scraping. And it's really nice if you have a hide that has been relatively taken care of. Like, recently we've been getting our hides from this meat processor, and recently they had a change of ownership, and the hides have gotten super nasty. Like there's like maggots and flies and really strong smells. And so you can still flesh it, but it's really nice if you have, have a fresher hide. This one's actually really pleasant. Something that's really good to be aware of with hides is that sometimes they have deer ticks in them, depending on when you get them during the season. And so those deer ticks can carry Lyme disease. And so it's a really good idea 
to freeze your hides if they do seem like they might have any ticks before you flush them. It's a little easier to flush them if they haven't been frozen, but I think that it's a, it's a good idea to go ahead and freeze them if there's any chance that they might have ticks. Now I've flushed all of the lower part of the hide and at this point I'm gonna flip it around to do the neck. Now, this hunter left a pretty long neck on this deer. They also did kind of a funky job of skinning. But so this whole thing here is a neck. So I'm actually gonna cut off a little bit more of that, but I'll start by flushing down here because I want to keep all these shoulders. The shoulders are a really nice part of the hide. So if, if I had been flushing this hide straight off the deer and this hadn't dried out at all in the freezer or otherwise, it would be a little easier, but it's not that bad. Now these gouge marks might cause me a problem, but they're pretty close to the edge of the hide, so I'm not that concerned about them. So taking that neck off will make all of the subsequent parts of tanning this hide much easier. You can see how thick that neck skin is. It's pretty crazy to try to tan. 